Right, we good. All right, Sentinel. So the purpose of the Sentinel is to take groups of messages and confirm them and we'll see what that means in a minute and pass a single message out so really it's a sort of it's doing a couple of jobs here this confirmation is a couple of jobs so one task it's doing is uh, ensure minimum number of copies of a message are received now we'll go into what that means in a minute so ensure the minimum number of copies are received the second thing it needs to do is ensure that each message is valid so for us that means a couple of things so a valid message means it's signed by the person who claims to have sent it and secondly we need to check is is the sender valid with respect with respect to his location in the network so <clears throat> there's three probable bits to this sentinel and we'll just see what each of them are individually so the first the first bit for the sentinel is the simple part so we have a message and from node A and that message claims to be a client type or node type basically there's one copy of that message so this is an individual sending a message so the sentinel will take that message and it has to confirm that this guy here is the sender of that message it's it's a single message from a single guy so he's not trying to get any group consensus here there's no notion of group consensus for that message so that message if you like has already been accumulated but what the sentinel must do is then check the key check the actual cryptographic key that was used to sign this is actually from that guy so I'll send a message to the network saying the group responsible for A the group near A nearest A send back the key for A and we get the key coming back here from that group and check the message is validly signed and then the message pops out so we pop that message out and that's held 
in an accumulator. So that's almost version one, really single message from a single source and we just go and check the key and make sure that that, that message is fine. A lot of the messages that we get on the network though come from groups. So when you've got a group sending a message and this is where we're using this sort of group consensus mechanism. So you've got some nodes sending a message saying one, two, three, four, and the, the sentinel here works. Internally, we have two accumulators. Now, the accumulator is a separate library, so we need to we need to leave that out. But basically, what the accumulator does, it just keep you you keep adding messages. So you you would say we want to accumulate this for four. So when you add the first message, it won't give you anything back. The second message. When you add the fourth message, this will return saying, uh, you have accumulated four messages, what do you want to do now? Here's the data. The other, so one accumulator is for to accumulate the messages to make sure that we've got the right amount of messages that we require. So we know that four, at this point, we know that four nodes sent us this message, but we don't know. There's two things that we don't know. One, is it really them? Is it really node one, two, and three, four that sent that message? And two, should it be them? So if we can confirm it was one, two, three, and four, can we also confirm that they are the nodes on the network responsible for this message that we got? So the message, uh, we have to figure out if, if it's those guys that should have sent it. So they'll claim, they'll claim to be representing some group. And here you would hope the group would be something like 2.5 if that was the name. So <clears throat> what we do is in the Sentinel as soon as you get a message, a group message and you, you add it, you're going to add to accumulator for the messages. The first message that we add to the accumulator, so we check the accumulator, have you ever seen this key before? Like, do we have any messages already from this source? And if so, that's fine. Then we keep adding until we've got the correct amount of messages. But if we haven't added to the accumulator before, it's not seen this key, that kicks off a get public keys. So we want to get the public keys. And we call that get group key, I think, is the name of the message. And this is, this here answers both of these questions. So what the network does at this point, I'll just scrub this to show you what the network does. So over here, we are a sentinel. And what we're saying is a message has come in with a target or a group claim of 2.5. So we send to the network. Now this is routing's job, it's outside Sentinel, but Sentinel's saying you need to do this for me. So routing does, uh, and this is implemented through a trait. So it's saying get the group closest to 2.5. And this goes through the XOR network and will get the nodes that the network believes is closest to, which may or may not be these guys, if they're hackers or something. 
or one of them's went offline in the meantime. And this is why we've got the difference between group size and quorum. As far as the Sentinel's concerned, there's just quorum, but routing does the rest of that. So we're confirming that the network believes these are the right guys. And we're also confirming that these guys give back the keys. So each of them, one, two, three, and four, will give back the keys for one, two, three, and four. And because of the way the network works, it, that could happen. You could get a five here, or you could get a Z, Q, one, two, here, there'll be slight differences in the keys you get back just because of the he, this node 4 here might be at the edge of that group and every node sees a different group anyway slightly different group so when we get this back here, this matrix we have to try and figure out we know that we've got node 4 we know we need his keys so there's a copies key here here and here. So we're going to get at maybe three copies of that key here. Nodes that three's key, we might find that that, well that's three as well, I'll just put a three in here. We might find that node three's keys slightly better. It may have a full four copies because node three's quite close to the target. And the closer to the target you are in these kind of networks, and again this is routing's job the more accurate that this thing's going to be. So it's going to, the more that you show up, probably as far as routing's concerned, if not Sentinel, uh, the more you show up, the chances are you're closer to the actual target than the ones who show up least. Trying to get a quorum in here is going to be problematic, I think. But if we're getting at least a key back, at least one copy of it, I'm pretty sure we're safe. The, so this here does two jobs. It tells us that those are the right guys and we've got a key. We've been able to get a key from this group as well. And I think that's what Ben has called flatten keys or something. So once we get those keys back, we're back to the, the two accumulators, so we've got accumulator for messages and we've got accumulator for keys. So the message one will always be first and that, that'll kick off the get keys. But we might get all the keys back first before we get the quorum number of messages or before we get to just the number of messages. That could happen. It's just because of the way it's, it's a network. So the message accumulator will kick off the get keys. But one of these, as we are adding a message, we'll find out if the accumulator is true. So it's it's got the number that we've asked for. So if we've asked for four, messages. When we're adding the fourth, this will come back true. Now that could be replaced with a, a channel, which I think is probably a better way than having an optional return value here. And also the same here though, when we're adding keys, at, at, at some stage it will return true. So what we're saying is, uh, well we're basically doing a, a while thing here, while message plus keys. So while we don't don't have both of these true, we're keeping adding stuff. Uh, as soon as one goes through, we remember, well, we've got enough messages. And even if we're adding more messages, it's fine. It doesn't matter. It just makes it a bit more accurate. Uh, but when both of them go through, we know that we've done our job. Now these messages, 
in this type of accumulator coming from different places are all equal. So basically there's no merging happens when we're doing this normal group message. These messages are always equal. So we don't we don't have any machinery or logic in this thing to say this particular message type you can't uh, you can't just straight accumulate it and imagine that that's the message you've got to merge it or something. There's no merge capability in this type of message. So <clears throat> so accumulator one, you've only got one guy coming with check the keys. Accumulator or sentinel, the second real part of sentinel. And I'm not saying there's three sentinels here or anything. I'm just saying that there's three distinct uh, patterns. So the first one, single message, check the keys. Second one, groups. A group of messages, get the group, get the keys, and confirm the group was correct. So this is sentinel number two pattern. The third pattern, and this is one I think is a little bit debatable, but and it may tie the sentinel to mate safe more than maybe more than it should. I'm not sure. In terms of tying it to mate safe, we did have some issues with keys, cryptographic keys, and IDs, and I think that's okay. It's okay for us to say we're using this thing uses the sodium or an ACL the sodium library for its cryptography. The same way that sodium is saying to users or salt is saying to users cryptography is really hard don't try and do it yourself we'll do it for you. I think it's valid for us to say this sentinel thing is going to require cryptography. Cryptography is really hard. Let's all do it for you. If we if we give the option here to use any cryptography library you want, people could use a less secure one. And it's not a it's not a hard thing to use salt at all. So it's it's probably valid. So <clears throat> we'll just sentinel one single source. Sentinel 2 group source and Sentinel 3 is let's call it refresh which if we remember back to DHT networks they've all got this refresh thing we have it as well even though we don't um, we don't call it refresh we call it account transfer but in DHT world, it's just a refresh. And the refresh is just that the refresh is responsible in a DHT type state. So the state of these kind of networks is a particular thing, and it's decentralized. So we know from routing, no two nodes hold the same state. But the closer the nodes are together, the more state they have in common. The further apart they are, the less state they have in common, to the point where there's zero state in common. But just like every human sees its own rainbow, every node sees its own state. And the closer neighbours will share more state than the further away neighbours. So the state, the state of the network, the state of a DHT is a very particular thing and it's very important that state is as minimal as possible. Obviously that you're going to have issues if you have very complex state. But the third uh, Sentinel design is, is really, the third part of it is really refresh in, in DHT terms. And you can consider it as the thing that's responsible for network state. And because it's network state, 
here the variables will not be all equal. So node A holds x equals 12, node B could hold x equals 13, node C x equals 10. And that's valid that that can happen. And that happens in all DHTs. That what it means is this guy here has probably received more messages that puts the state of this up to 13. Uh, but it could be the converse. It could be that this guy's received more delete messages to have brought it down to 10. But they're in a group and there's messages in flight. And some of these guys will pick it up and process it uh, faster. So we can't assume that if this is an increasing number, that C hasn't got those other three messages that this guy's got. He's probably, he could have received them, he's just not processed them yet. So it could be happening inside the computer, it could be in the wire. Those three pieces of state are likely to be somewhere. <clears throat> They're also likely to vanish, or just two pieces of state that even when the network settles, that you've got something like this, 12, 12, 13. And that's valid as well. That's a valid uh, state for the network to be in, in terms of that particular account information. So the third uh, Sentinel thing, and it's, it's good to say this Sentinel is, it's like, like most of the stuff we do, it's for peer-to-peer -peer network, and it's a DHT type thing. And we can keep that in our minds that we, at the moment we don't need to make Sentinel so generic that it works for everyone all the time. It can be generic enough just to work for us just now in this iteration and the API may change and develop as we go along. But the refresh stuff is interesting because that is going to have to be merged because A, B, C, they're all going to have potentially different values. They should be roughly close, but not exactly the same. And a refresh in the DHT network, we know what that means is the network changed. A node went off, another node joined a group, and something's happened that the network has changed, which means we need to do a state update. And that's all we're doing here as a state update. And so the, from the Sentinel's perspective, it's going to see state update information. And that's going to be a, quite an interesting thing. The, from routing's perspective, if you like, that state update information is all from your group. And it's worth noting that we won't get state update information that isn't from our group if we do something's broke. So the way that routing is going to use this refresh, it's going to say it's going to have to come from our group. So what we we haven't taken care of this very well in routing just now. So as one of these refresh types comes in, and refresh isn't put, get, or post, it's a specific call that would happen in routing. And that there should be in the routing interface. So from the Sentinel's perspective, it's going to get the data. And it's going to do some very, very similar work to the group sentinel here. So it's going to say, one, two, three, four, sent me this piece of information. And it's going to do the accumulator stuff, the two accumulators, exactly the same as this group thing. And during 
that it's going to say get group keys. Now, if we just jump out the Sentinel for a second, the routing node should be able to spot this particular message here means from my routing table. Don't send a network thing for this. Who do we think that this group is? This is a specific type of message. We don't necessarily need to send a network thing here. If these guys aren't on my routing table, something's gone badly wrong. <clears throat> so slight differences from version 2 there with the group key thing. Then when it comes to the accumulated data, these accumulators here can't really handle that. That's going to give us back not one copy, but the accumulator's always doing this anyway, but that's going to give us back the four copies. And we'll notice that they're probably not all equal. Uh, they're likely not to be equal. But we'll have put a stipulation that those types need, say, ordered or something, or partially equal, whatever trait you want to put on those types, that allows us to say, we will merge this type of data, this refresh data, i.e. will always merge it. Now, how we do the merging is, again, it's probably a, it's not really implementation because it would affect the API, what we demand of this kind of data. So for, for now, for our immediate purposes, merge equals get the median value for that particular key. So that, that could be handled easily by requiring a trait on that type of data that allows us to calculate the median value. And I'll just say it like that because there's lots of ways you could do that. So this particular type of data for refresh and it, this, what happens in the refresh call, we're going to have to uh, say that the, the traits for data in these calls may be more extensive than traits for just a normal group call. So the refresh is the third design pattern, a third design consideration in Sentinel. And the difference, you know, just so the difference from two to three is get keys. That's a net call. And here it would be no network activity. From routing's perspective, uh, it's not for it's set the sentinel doesn't care. But what why I'm putting this here in terms of the Sentinel is when Sentinel calls get keys, it looks like it needs to call two different types of get keys. Otherwise how would the user of Sentinel know what to do here? The data has got here for two it's got to be equal or partially equal. i.e. We're just, we're just using the quality. And here we've got to have ordered or some mergeable capability. Uh, those are the, those are the kind of prime differences between that type and that type. And those differences are enough that the API probably needs to reflect different uh, different call types. So it's add a single source, add a group source, and add prefresh data. 
are probably different uh, calls into the Sentinel and the Sentinel get keys call there's likely to be three get keys calls here as well these are all just one key we're chasing uh, we could probably use the get group keys for the single guy anyway and just pick his key out uh, that's likely to be okay here we're specifically saying well we specifically want a group key here so and here we're saying we want a key but we don't we don't care how you get this key but we're going to give you a hint because we're going to call something here get keys that the user of sentinel can take a hint and for us in routing we would take the hint that we would go to our routing table for this refresh thing to get the keys here for the refresh so that's a uh, that's sentinel so sentinel sentinel's probably about the most important bit of code as far as security is concerned for us in the network so we really need to be able to think deep about this but also sentinel is quite an important one to think iteratively like what can we do just now to get everything going and then how can we ensure that we've got the correct api for sentinel as time moves on i, I strongly suspect we'll put an api in place and change it quite dramatically as we try and find other uses for sentinel and other other networks use sentinel as well i think that 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 will change so from our perspective it's good because we are seeing as a user of sentinel well we need to be told different things and i'm not sure how far we can map these into single calls and map the get keys for instance into a single get key call uh, i'm not sure it's wise to even try but i'm not trying to stamp a way of implementing this but these for sentinel what what we've gone over here is the requirements of Sentinel. There's three particular design considerations, and each of these design considerations has got slightly different, uh, a slightly different impact on the user, to the user of Sentinel, to the point where they probably need to know that add these things differently and the calls that sentinel is going to make like get key calls or whatever are also going to be able to be handled differently by the user it could be a single get key call and it's you know whatever but i think being as explicit as possible just now is going to help us uh, and become more generic in an iterative way because there's some really nice patterns in here and there's some it's got some very nice security elements to it that other people don't seem to have ever used the group consensus thing is is pretty enormous so that's sentinel basically 